Hi, everybody. It's July 4th. Yes, are you basking in your glorious freedoms just simply because you're an American? Are you attending parades and parties, eating hot dogs and apple pie? Aha. Uh -huh. Well, as tyranny cements itself, the juxtaposition of watching Americans celebrate they actually thinking that all is swell in the good old U.S. of A. It is, it, uh, you know, I read your comments. I, I read that you feel like you're living in Twilight Zone. I, you know, you're, this is Kafka-esque. It is. It is. July 4th. And then, as I'm scrolling down YouTube, I see all of these areas that have been flooded out, people lost their homes. Nothing will stop us from our July 4th parade. Then I think about how much money it takes to put on these parades. And of course Trump's parade. And I, I wonder what it is about Americans that while they know so many Americans are suffering that they will fight to put on these parades and they're so happy that the parades are being put on and all of that money. Can't we find excitement in helping one another? You know, I'm going to get to the this Trump spectacular um, or spectacle after just showing you a little bit of recent flooding and those who have been flooded and who are desperate for help they're not celebrating think about just in the last couple of months how many people have been flooded out lost their homes have nowhere to go farmers devastated it's been, it's remarkable. And the numbers, it's got to be several hundred thousand. Just recent, just in the last couple of months. And we're spending $80 million on a, on a parade. And then I think, wow, what if we had a president who said, we're going to skip the parade this year and we're going to celebrate July 4th by calculating how much that parade would cost and then helping our fellow Americans who are suffering, helping them. We can't forget our fellow Americans today. They're not celebrating. So let's bring them something that they can celebrate, something that will put a smile on their face. And then you have a whole group of people doing that, and the energy would be just unbelievable. It would be fabulous. That's what, that is what is fun and exciting for me. But instead, instead, so many are just forgotten, and I don't want to forget them. So call me a killjoy, call me whatever it is that you want to call me. I can't forget them. This happened in Illinois. Uh, this was posted July 3rd. Heavy rain causes homes, streets to flood in Westmont. This is what the Liberty Park neighborhood looked like early this morning. Flooding shut down roads and water filled people's basements. It left residents with a huge mess to clean up today. DuPage County workers were also busy pumping the floodwaters out. They worked overnight and into the day to clear water from the homes. This is a constant problem for people that they've been dealing with for years, and now they're getting ready for another round of rain. Um, every time they say flash flood, my stomach turns because it's... I just remember everything I go through. Well, it was up to people's knees when they were walking through earlier. It's receded a little bit, so 
hope, hoping for the best for tonight. I saw the water, I was, oh my God. I seen the water up to where the mark was and I went, oh, again, again. Again, again, again. And I did look at radar. I saw what was happening over Illinois. Not just Illinois, but other areas. It's remarkable how in our face this weather is engineered by man. So many areas are getting three feet, four feet, five feet of flash flooding all over. And we have Americans who just refuse to believe that man is causing this. But who cares anyway? July 4th, where's my hot dog? Where's my apple pie? Where's my poisonous food? That's what I want. Mississippi. This woman has been fighting to get some help for an area of Mississippi that has literally been sitting in four feet of water for months, months, months. Because, well, they just don't have pumps to take out the water. And it's the, uh, I'm not using the right terms, but the backlog of water from flooding just sits there. Their homes completely destroyed, the entire area. And we, we have $80 million to spend on our military parade for July 4th. State deals with historic flooding. Senator Sidney Hyde-Smith tells us she is working with the EPA at the Army Corps of Engineers to come up with solutions. They're truly in a desperate situation. I have worked harder on this than probably anything since I've been a U.S. Senator, and we have made progress. I, uh, I feel much better about where we are. Sometimes time has to pass, and uh, you just have to let uh, tempers settle down a little bit from years past, and you have to revisit it. This is a new day. It's a new administration. It doesn't matter what happened in 08. We know what's happening now, and we've got to bring these people together to the table. When she mentioned 08, she was referring to 2008 when the EPA blocked the Yazoo Backwater Area Pumps Project, saying it would hurt the wetlands and wildlife. <laughs> Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith adds any solution would still take time before results can finally be seen. Those results can't come fast enough, Jacob. Okay, well, you know... This is a new day. It's, it's a new day. Let's forget about what happened in the past. I don't think that that is a very good strategy um, because what happened in the past, your Environmental Protection Agency is implementing Agenda 2030. Uh, it's working for the United Nations. Ah, oh, we've got to save the wetlands and, and those species that are not two-legged. And we destroy homes. Yeah. That sounds like a reasonable policy that's being implemented. Well, you know, these people have been sitting underwater for months. Months. All right, here. Left many people who can't get around trapped in their homes. Channel 5's Kristen Von Preisen explains what's being done for them. When the water starts to rise, we wanted to know what about senior citizens and people with disabilities? How do they get help? It's been several days since this neighborhood in Harlingen was devastated. These homes sit behind a small lake. Monday, inside one of these homes, the rain hit. Water just rushing up the river and it's going through here. Michael Coite says for the most part, all he could do was watch the damage unfold. There's nothing we can do. Coite is 85 years old. He says he has arthritis and he has trouble walking around. He lives at this house with his wife and grandson, who he says is disabled. There's nothing I can do here. I'm afraid we'll go any higher and we're going to pray for it to sleep. He says they wanted to get out of the house because they weren't sure how much longer the water was going to rise. I took a chance on the road right there, water about right here. 
But I made it to get my son out, my grandson. The water was too deep. He says he called 911. With the water rising higher and higher, up to this line, up to his hips, and the water even deeper out on the street, he says nobody came out to help. We checked with Cameron County about this. Okay, so when I saw this video, emergency assistance available for disabled and elderly during flooding, I thought, okay, good. What was the emergency assistance available? Register with 211. That's it. That's it. So, this man's home, 85 years old, lives with a disabled son. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? Do you think this man has a lot of money to just get right in there? And... No, he's talking about having to renovate it himself, 85 years old. This is what he's living. Time is running out. We are just at the point now to where we have got to go. A Hancock County family is living in fear that their house will slide down a mountain. This after the flooding in February washed away half of their yard. Months later, the edge closer to their home. Now this is just one family still dealing with flooding recovery. Reporter Shannon Smith tells us how their son is now working to help more people with damaged homes. Shannon. This is Rita Raleigh's yard. It is devastated. Her son has watched as she keeps getting denied help. And that's when he realized he can help her and others like her with a big fundraiser. From February to now, grass has grown on Rita Raleigh's mountaintop yard in Sneedville, but there's less yard to cover. We could walk out there probably a good seven or eight feet. Not anymore. Raleigh's yard continues to erode after much of it was washed away in the historic February flooding. Indentation right here that I'm stepping on is going to be the next crack. It, you can actually feel it. As her trailer home gets closer to the edge, she's forced to say goodbye to her favorite views. Time is running out. We are just at the point now to where we have got to go. But it's expensive to move a trailer, and Raleigh's been denied assistance from every place she's applied. We have just not been able to get anywhere with, with any of these agencies. Her struggle made her son take action. So it's kind of inspired me to want to help them and some other families. So we've decided to help four families, you know, so that's why we're doing this event. This weekend, he's hoping to raise money for his mom and two families in Kodak and Seymour. One lady's house is actually broken half, uh, split right down the middle. The other lady's uh, foundation fell in and her house buckled. The all-day-long fundraiser is on Saturday at the Coolbach Harley-Davidson in Morristown. If we step up as a community and as, as a whole, I think we can really, you know, do something and help these families. Families like his mom, waiting for help on the top of her mountain. It just made my heart just swell because, you know, I just thought what a blessing it was to have such a wonderful son. And a blessing it is. And this is what people need to be doing in all communities because, you know, searching for help in government agencies, it's, it's just not there. It's not there for the majority of people who need help. And yes, you know, a lot of people get upset when I speak like this, but you know, just being surrounded by people who want to help and then you start thinking of, all right, let's just throw out all of these ideas and let's get it organized. And there's such great energy there. It's fun, you know, and it's so incredible when, you know, you can go and someone who's so desperate and so scared that you can actually go and take away that desperation and fear and help them. There's nothing better, nothing better. And that's why I see these parades, you know, going on. And there was in this area of Tennessee, oh, putting on that parade. Hey, let's smile. But think about what could have happened in this area what what these people could have brought this woman instead of spending that money on 
a parade. I don't, I, look, the pomp and circumstance, all of the money spent on, you know, these parades and everything, I've never understood it. I've never understood it. But now I really don't understand it. And you know what? The truth is, these people are forgotten. They are forgotten. And I, I don't want that to happen. Threatening the livelihood of cotton and soy. And by the way, this is Tennessee. This is Tennessee. Bean farmers in Lauderdale County, Tennessee, and the prolonged flooding is starting to threaten fall crops. Our local 24 News crew had to take a boat to get a first-hand look at the destruction. Look at that. Chisholm Lake Store restaurant has been closed since January, but the owner found a clever way to keep loyal customers by voting them in every other Saturday to eat. Farmers are suffering the most with nearly, get this, 200,000 acres underwater. They say it's never been this bad for this long. This is July, and it's been up since like this, since uh, for this is going on 10 months. So our farmers are not going to be able, looks like, not going to be able to plant their this year's crop. So that's going to hurt everybody. Today, Drone 24 got a bird's eye view of the early July flooding. The mayor says it means farmers might not be able to replant and plan for fall harvest, which will ruin countless crops. Okay, so, you know, what's happening to our farmers? Why are America's farmers killing themselves? The suicide rate for farmers is more than double that of veterans. A former farmer gives an insider's perspective on farm life and how to help. How to help. You know, I read these articles and I am shocked by the answer to how to help establish more mental health facilities and hotlines. How to help? What's happening with our policies that are being implemented that are destroying farmers? That's what needs to be addressed. The weather being used as a weapon, that's what needs to be addressed. But instead, what is addressed in most articles is that they just don't have enough access to mental health services. Nothing will change and more farmers will kill themselves until the root causes are addressed. So we'll see more kill themselves. And the rate with which farmers are killing themselves has increased this year. Has increased this year. Four reasons famine is coming to America. The ripple effect, guys. The ripple effect. Farmers filing for bankruptcy, devastated by floods. You can bet that famine is coming. Food shortages. I read a comment from a subscriber today who, I actually have to get it for you. Here it is. I realize this is off topic. Sorry, Carol, but, uh, and it might seem trivial to some, but the things I'm seeing, hearing, sensing are extremely telling about our current state of affairs and impending catastrophic societal collapse in America. That, it's not off topic. It's just taking, you know, what I was saying that was happening to me, then extending it to the collective. And she's absolutely right. Those of you who are comfortable your comfort will soon be gone. Um, Taco Bell. Now, I've never gone 
into a Taco Bell. I don't, I don't know their menus or whatever, but she says they announced tortilla populace, meaning many locations have 86 several menu items due to their inability to obtain something as simple as tortillas. The reported cause is a change of suppliers. I don't believe that at all food shortages will show up first in bulk buying and quickly hit store shelves before we can blink. With the apocalyptic crop loss and damage taking place all over the world, and it is, this should be a major red flag for all. Yeah, over a year ago I noticed it became nearly impossible to find white corn shells in the stores and thought it was strange. In addition to local Walmarts and other chains reducing selection by half, frequently running out of common daily items. I've been noticing that. U.S. famine is imminent and I feel it might already be upon us. It's it's happening already. So the ripple effect of what people are, I guess, uh, not acknowledging, it's coming upon you. It's coming upon all of us. And July 4th, ah, the great Americans the compassionate, com caring Americans. Clearly something's very wrong when our farmers are killing themselves, when our veterans are killing themselves, when our children are killing themselves, when a whole lot of... Uh, the, the, the suicide rate in every category has increased quite a lot. So, is America doing just swell? Obviously not. But we live this juxtaposition of, hey, it's just fabulous here in good old America, when nothing, nothing really represents that, except for the individual who's still comfortable, who has not suffered the consequences yet, they living in their small little life. Well, I want to have a hot dog and I want to have apple pie and I want to go to the parade. But couldn't we just not do that this year because we do have so many who've lost their homes and they are in need. Oh God, just such a killjoy. You know, This man has been working with farmers for a very long time, years. And this is a recent article. I work with suicidal farmers. It's becoming too much to bear. He left the seminary, became a clinical psychologist for farmers. Now, as historic flooding ravages the Midwest, he's never been more overwhelmed. It is overwhelming. It is overwhelming. And what would, what would reduce the overwhelm is more people caring. So, you know, I'm not even going to play this. Oh, the, the, I'll play a few minutes of it. A new poll shows a tightening race no. in a crowded field of Democrats for running for president. That's not the right video. Where did it go? Where did it go? Well, it was the uh, spectacle of Washington, It's a DC. holiday salute to American military might. It'll be like no other. It'll be special. And I hope a lot of people come. And the president's promising a spectacle, even in the face of criticism. We're going to have planes going overhead, the best fighter jets in the world, and other planes, too. And we're going to have some tanks stationed outside. We're going to be pretty careful with the tanks because the roads have a tendency not to like to carry heavy tanks, so we have to put them 
in certain areas. Besides the tanks, the festivities will feature flyovers by the Navy Blue Angels and by pilots showing off the F-35, the Osprey, a new version of Marine One, even probably Air Force One, according to a source familiar with the... Sorry, this is, you know, at a cost of over $80 million. And then you know how many Americans are really suffering. Oh, and we're just going to put on that military parade. Well, guess what? There are an awful lot of people who have been, oh my God, you know, how could we possibly do this? This is, uh, here, that's not my reflection. The Americans scream at the mirror he holds up for them. That's Putin, you know? this military parade for July 4th. It's Putin. That's not my reflection. That's North Korea. That's not my reflection. That's a banana republic. No, America. That's you. It's been you all along. I'm going to read this article. And I happen to like a lot of Caitlin John Stone's articles. Don't agree with everything, but this jingoistic military fetishization is as American as bald eagle McNuggets, and it is. We have to face the truth. We've got to face the truth. We have to face the truth of ourselves individually. We've got to face the truth of who we are as a people. Violent. Violent not caring, delusional, living a pretense, only caring about our own comfort, not caring about all the people that we cause suffering to, not even caring about our fellow Americans whose homes are gone and they need help. I'm not talking about every American, but if you're not seeing this and you get angry at me, I do have to wonder if that's how you're living. So the pundits, you know, especially in PR, you know, they, oh my God, how could you possibly do this? Tanks and oh, the show off of a military parade. It's who we are. You know, he's put in our face who we are. I even did a video on Trump has put in our face who we really are. A violent people who as long as the violence is happening somewhere else, we don't care. You know, the military hardware parade is taking place at the behest of President Bolton's social media assistant, Donald Trump. And critics have been vocally decrying it as alien and un-American. Yes, because you live a pretense that you're great and you're caring and you're compassionate and you're not violent. Pundits, and I can't pronounce that name, and another one, uh, have been saying it's something Russia would do. The Independent said, it's a spectacle you'd see in authoritarian regimes such as North Korea, Iran, and China. We are the evil empire. We've got to face that. We are a authoritarian, authoritarian, authoritarian regime a tyranny. We are a tyranny. And we've got so many Americans celebrating our freedom. Yeah, it's become Kafkaesque living in this country. Adam Best, Charles Pierce, both likened it to something that would be done in a banana republic. An interesting choice of phrase for a gratuitous display of American military bravado, given that term's blood-soaked origins in U.S. corporate colonialism. All of these people are, of course, being ridiculous. Of course it's ridiculous. There's nothing alien 
or un-American about Trump's parade at all. Jingoistic fetishization of the military is as American as a deep-fried trademark symbol, apple pie, hot dogs. All this parade is, actually, is just one of the many, 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 many times over the last two and a half years that Trump has shown America its true face, and Americans haven't liked what they've seen. Yeah. Does that not resonate with you guys? This is the same country, after all, in which someone simply mentioning that they were in the armed forces often elicits a reverent, oh, thank you for your service, from whoever happens to hear them. And I hear that in stores, you know, when I go out. I hear people, just strangers, you know, if somebody's wearing something military, thank you for your service. But what are you thanking them for? Spending uh, four years protecting Raytheon profit margins and crude oil is something ordinary civilians should be grateful for? Well, certainly not four years. This has been going on forever. You know, uh, you guys know no other country does that, right? In Australia, if you tell someone you were in the army, they'll tell you, oh, bonanza, mate. I'm a plumber myself. It's not a thing. Because when you're not part of the most powerful military force in the history of civilization, powerful people don't have nearly as much invested in making a thing out of it. This is the same country where every second house and every single McDonald's has its flag flying over it, a cult of idolatry that's become so ubiquitous that a football player choosing to kneel instead of stand before that stupid piece of cloth generates national outrage. Well, what is that? What's the outrage about? Oh, that flag. What does it represent? Freedom? But you do nothing to fight for your freedom. You're losing it every single day. You do nothing. So, start. sorry. You make that a stupid piece of cloth. Living your pretense. You know, the same country where simply bleeding support the troops, freedom isn't free, was in and of itself seen as a be-all, end-all debate-winning argument for the rape of Iraq. The same country that spent weeks on end mourning the death of bloodthirsty psychopath John McCain on the grounds that he's a war hero, hero when they should have loaded his heartless cadaver onto a trebuchet. Don't think it's shit, but, uh, and launched it into the nearest tire fire as part of a telethon benefit for Syria. All that's considered perfectly normal by mainstream media America and liberals are getting their knickers in a knot over a few tanks and a blue and blue angels. Hell, it's not even like Trump invented presidential parades full of instruments of mass military slaughter, JFK, Eisenhower, FDR, and the fact that it's mostly Democrats kvetching about this parade is especially absurd given that in 2019 they've somehow managed to become even more hawkish and jingoistic than the Republicans. This is the same crowd that just the other day was attacking Trump for having the audacity to meet with Kim Jong-un. The same crowd that's constantly accusing Trump of being weak on Syria and Afghanistan. The same crowd that's made heroes of the U.S. intelligence community and the grown-ups in the room. Yeah, the grown-ups, the generals. And the same crowd that's been shrieking hysterically for the last three years, demanding greater and greater escalations against a nuclear superpower because something, something, Putin's cock holster. The biggest problem with Trump's tank parade will be that male Democrats in attendance will have trouble hiding their erections. Americans are the most aggressively propagandized people in the world, and U.S. service personnel are the most aggressively propagandized, propagandized people in America. That's the group that all this special reverence and fetishization has 
been attached to. A bunch of kids who've been manipulated into killing and dying for plutocratic investments in the mommy-shaped hole in John Bolton's heart. That's what this parade is meant to manufacture even more support for in a culture that is saturated past the brim in a relentless barrage of war propaganda. Face it, America. Trump's tank parade isn't in any way alien, alien to anything you've ever stood for. The only way to make it more American would be to add a few monster trucks and a Kardashian. This parade is your reflection. The parade is you. And that's the truth. That's the truth. And the fact that we don't demand that our president skip the festivities and put the 80 million towards those who are suffering today. It reflects who we are. So when we don't face the truth of who we are individually and we don't face the truth of who we are collectively, certainly if you're not facing the truth of who you are individually, you ain't participating in uh, any healing. Oh, you might know the lies, but if you're still living a pretense, then you're still a part of the problem. Uh, yeah, well, thank you for watching. I'll be posting a video on an update on the problems I was having with my bank and PayPal later on. Guys, we have to change how we think and how we operate and how we live. And we really do need to do our best to create the communities where there is trust. The bottom line is, you've got to bust through your pretense. You've got to bust, shatter that delusion. You've got to get honest and live honestly and live the principles that you speak. There is no other way for us to manifest anything that is moral or healthy. So that's up to all of us individually. Ciao, guys.